welcome to BlueFM.com, slated as North America's best streaming source for Caribbean entertainment news. The team utilizes the advent of enhanced technology to explore the digital arena of broadcasting, which competitors viewed us as an immediate citadel in the industry. We create a mix of up-to-the-minute contents and top music, top music for the month on a compelling site of groundbreaking information. Groundbreaking information. We are consistently seeking content writers, DJs, and producers to partake in our ongoing projects to be the best. Are you looking to start your online business? Do not hesitate. Send your inquiry to bluefmads at gmail.com for more information. Is Mr. <laughs> Ricardo, Mr. Volunteer Burke. Now, you have been doing amazing things, things that you have actually been awarded for. Um, mm. And um, we're going to get into all of that, but... I first would like for you to tell me a little bit more about yourself, where you're from. Let's talk a little bit about your upbringing. It, it's best you ask the questions because I'm just the basic and that's it. <laughs> so I'm actually from, um, good evening everyone who's listening first of all. And thank you very much for the opportunity to be able to share my journey with you guys. Um, I am from St. Thomas, a community called Springfield Barking Lodge in St. Thomas. Mm-hmm. A very rural community. Okay. Um, talk to us about. Oh. Talk to us about your upbringing. What was it like growing up as a child, or some of your um, so Just like most um, Jamaican children, I grew up, I grew up in a um, two poor, fa- poor families. Uh, that's a humble beginnings, but uh, it was very good. Yeah, the, the, some of the moments were very. Um, I was happy for one. And there were some things that might off, uh, but for for most part, I was kind of okay, you know. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So you are affectionately known as Mister Volunteer because mm-hmm. of your selfless charity through the Youth for Change Foundation. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you and your team are doing through the Youth for Change Foundation? Uh, it's a lot, but I can explain some of them, but it's a lot, very, very, a lot of things. Oh, we want so to hear all of it. When, when <laughs> I share the journey. So when we started out, I started out with the vision or the idea um, to help children go back to school. And it started from two, um, two a boy and a little girl, a brother and sister. So it started out from then. But before that, it was like um, I was going through an Europe period of my life, to, to be honest. I got noticed from where I was living, bailiff come from, things them. Wow. All those stuff, you know, and I was going through a depression um, phase, you know. But it started out with, with me and a, a friend called um, Lincoln Thompson. There was this little boy and girl, they always see me and ask me for money. And one day I asked them why they're not in school, and they explained to me that their mother don't have the money to send them to school. So at that moment, I wanted to assist them to go back to school. So what we did was we, I didn't have a name at the time, I didn't have the use for change at the time. I didn't know what the word volunteer mean at the time. I didn't know what organization was at the time. I was just this youth wanting to help these two children. And when we started out, we started doing um, tag drives. And when we got them back into school, it's like the feeling, you know? And I was searching for a name to put to it and stuff. And it was just out of the blues. The youth for change just came up. So we assisted those um, children to go back to school. I think one of them is in grade five now, and the other is in grade seven. Wow. So that's where it's all, it all began from. Wow, that's dope. That's um, amazing. And uh, one interesting thing that you mentioned is that the idea came about when you were going through one of the worst periods of your life. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell us, yeah, tell us more about that. All right. So when I said the worst period, I was I was employed to a prominent manufacturing company in Jamaica, a world renowned company, and I was employed as a temporary worker. So. The type of person I am, anything I'm doing, I try to give it my best. So I was there for, I think, four and a half years there about as a temporary worker, and I was working so hard, you know, to the point where I was considered to become a permanent member of staff. But you know the thing with, with um, persons trying to roll your back and stuff like that. So I remember at one point, normally you'd, you'd work for 12 weeks and then stay home for four weeks, and then they'll call you back to renew your contract, and, and it, it continues. So there was this particular time in 2014 when I got uh, my, my contract expired and I was there waiting on the four weeks to come and say, yes, I'll go back to work. And it, the four weeks turned out into about seven months. And I was going through it a way where um, I had loans 
that I borrowed for a lender friend, so he could actually start a business and that. I thought he, he was paying it back, but he wasn't. And I also got so that I'm out of a job for one. I couldn't get them because I was looking at a job and couldn't get them in time. But rent piled up on me, so the landlord tell me that, look, this is it. It's been a while now and, and stuff like that. So that was the time. And I asked somebody to talk to him and they gave me some extension, even though I still never know I would pay it back. And during, during that time, I used to walk in the nights and talk to myself, used to cuss God, used to smoke and when nobody was there around and stuff like that. And, you know, and the, the thing what, that I said during that time, I said to God that, look, why is it that you're always blessing wicked people and then I am trying so hard to, to try to make, be a better person and it, it not work out, you know? So I used to cause God and talk to a lot um, to him and stuff like that. Till one day I said to him that, I'm going to promise you this, I'm going to help your people, but promise me that you will take care of my needs and ensure that you provide the resource to serve your people. And that was the, the third point where when I started to assist those children, things started to fall in place because what I'm, happened is that before even those two child, what I did was I wrote a letter and that letter took me about three to four weeks to, to complete. So I would write every night, I would up two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, I would up writing, writing, writing. And the letter become about three pages. And what I did, I, I sent that letter to all um, celebrities in Jamaica, the dance, all artists, the media personalities, the, the prominent companies, everybody on, um, on social media I could find to send, I sent them that letter. And the only person who responded first was Digicel, which is the Jamaican phone company. And when they responded, they said, look, Ricardo, this is a very good initiative. We can't give your organization, but we can give you as the individual to do the project. And that was where it all started out. And then the member of parliament at the time actually gave us $30,000 towards a back-to-school treat. And that back-to-school treat was held on September 30, which is my daughter's birthday. So that was our first um, event, official event. And that's where things just start pick up, where a person start looking to us you now for, for guidance and stuff like that. So something was thrown on me that I didn't even prepare for. Wow. Uh, so since since the formation of the Youth for Change Foundation, right? How has your life changed? <laughs> so I I must say it, and for the past months I've been keep on reminding myself that I am just son, I am just son. Even when things get tougher, keep on saying, remember you are just son and you, you know? But it has been a roller coaster. I can share with you that um, in the beginning, I used to struggle a lot in terms of there are days or nights when I'd go to bed with just a cream crackers and some water, or a roast bread fruit and some water, even on Sundays, you know? So I would struggle for, for a long period of time. I remember wearing one pants for about one year and two months, you know, and a shirt for probably be, um, eight months, but I wash the shirt every night and wear wear back the next month and stuff like that. So for a while when I just started, I literally struggled. And in the back of my mind, I still never want to give up because then even though I'm struggling, we were able to help um, children see me during that time. You know, and I keep on talking to God see me this time, not cussing him this time, but being more grateful and said to him that continue to use me to serve your people, continue to use me, continue to provide the resources. And over a period of time, I think um, in 2015, we did a, back, uh, not a battle school, but a community health fair, which is a massive one, the biggest one to date in the community, where over 30 something agencies was there to provide free service. So we had doctors providing free um, visit. We have dentists providing free visit. We have all government agencies providing free services on the day. And that was a really, really massive event. And after that event, then it, it, it started to open more doors after that event, you know. So it has been a journey, but God has, 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 has brought us this far. And I think we can actually go more some more years because I always say that until it, the day I take my last breath, I want to continue serving your people, you know. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, you are the recipient of one of the highest honors in Jamaica, the Prime Minister's National Youth Award. And not only that, you were presented with the award by the Honorable Prime Minister himself, Andrew Olness. Just walk us through the moments leading up to you getting on stage and what, what was your thought process the whole time? <laughs> All right, two things. So, anybody know me know I'm a rebel. So, I am one who always carry me like this, just to represent the ghetto you them where, you know? I try to represent them as best as possible because people tend to shun them or 
criticize them or um, discriminate against them. So I tried to kill myself like them. So the first thing that I heard when um, when I got the phone call, I look, I'm going to nominate for Prime Minister Award, and I want you to follow through on it because I'm not a person who um, go for awards. I don't really fancy awards, you know. Yeah. I'm just that humble person doing what is right. So when I got the call, the person actually said to me, "Record, I'm going to nominate, and I want you to follow through on it." I know you're going to say no, but I want you to follow through because it might open some more door. And I said, "All right, no problem," because he's a mentor. So I said, "No problem, I'll, I'll go ahead." So to be honest with you. Um, the youth who have served with us actually deserve it. So I, I, I had no doubt that we would have, would have received it. So I know they deserve it because they have done so much, you know, over the years. But uh, when they call the name, it's like it was bittersweet in terms of thinking about more about sponsors and donors and the volunteers. It was it was more on that basis where I've been thinking that look, this is your reward. This is you um, being recognized for the work that you have been done. So it was kind of humbling, you know, and, and even before that, there are many persons who get award and it wasn't the Prime Minister who gave them it. But when my name called it, the Prime Minister was there and, and, and one thing I said to him that before he even reached, I said to him that um, I want to do something, I want to develop Eastern St. Thomas. That was, that was my exact word to him before I received the, the award, you know. And he laughed and said, all right, no worry yourself. You know, I will share a minute of conversation and then we got the award and stuff like that. But apart from that, also, um, we receive a hundred thousand dollar grant from Jamaica National nice. Bank. They gave us a hundred thousand dollars. Give me personal to towards school, and I actually use that money to assist persons. You know, but yeah. Wow, <laughs> wow. Um, it's so nice to hear. You know, your exchange with the prime minister and him reassuring you that mm -hmm. you have his full support. I loved. I love it. Um, two things I admire the most about you, though, is one, your determination mm. and your consistency, despite the many doubters, because when you first started, I've read that when you first started, <laughs> that people would say, oh, a scamming thing and, you know, and just a, a complete judgment without even mm. having an idea or understanding what you were all about. Why was it, in the midst of all of that, why was it important for you to continue the mission? All right, I'll be honest. At first, in, in those moments, it, it hurt a bit. But when I, over the years I grew and I understand, I realized that, look, um, the mindset of, of underserved people is different, you know? So probably some of them never finished school, so they, they, they think in capacity. And I, I grew to learn that persons normally judge you based on how they would react to a situation. So, given the situation to be my position, they might be the type of person they expected. So, they were throwing that judgment on me. And, and for one, it hurt. Honestly, it hurt. Because I was there um, in the community, going out every day, trying to um, do tag drive and ask persons for kinds and stuff to help a community, which is actually throwing back it on you. So, look, you're a scammer, you're a thief, you're a homosexual or something, you're a look. Oh, all these comments, you know. But in the back of my mind, I always have this thing from a, a, a growing up. A, I was growing up, I said to myself that the best way to, to prove somebody wrong is to do what they expect not to do. So from when I was small, I, I always have a love proof things to people that look, if I said it can't work, I'll show you how it can, it can work. And then I've done that many times, many times, because even when I wanted to start the organization, I remember going to a prominent um, community figure in my community and said to, said to her that, look, I want to start a group and I want somewhere to keep meetings. And I suggested the school in the community and the first reply was you don't have the money oh you have to do that as a matter of fact the school is not available to you so it doesn't make any sense you know and i look at myself and i said all right cool i went to the next one and the next one said look you know you have to try it and everything but it must work out don't get too personal it must work out you know i go to another one again and they say all right then cool no problem and that's it so i call and friends and friends who said why well, ricky and the money for real still not a real thing i'm talking or so you know, it makes sense, you know. And the only person said to me that, look, just give it that try because me know your stairs. What did my mom to tell me, say, look, just try it. If it work, I saw what. Just put it all into it. Once I believe that it, it must work. And that was the only advice I listened. Yes. Believe me. Yeah. So I'm grateful for you, my, my, my mom around because probably if she'd passed on, she wouldn't be there to give me that, 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 that advice, you know. So yeah. that was the only advice yeah. that I listened to. And it started out and I live to say 
the same persons come back to me because I didn't condemn them or, or shun them or anything. They would come back around and say, Ricardo, I'm proud of you. I love what you're doing and stuff like that. They might not say anything from a genuine place, but at least yeah. they get the opportunity yeah. to come to me and say it, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And shout out to your mom. Shout out to your mom for, for sticking yeah. by you. Like, no, yeah. but there's nobody Always. like a mother's love. I'm telling you. Yeah. Nobody. All right. So what has been your most difficult task, right? You know, besides the initial doubt, you know, and stuff like that, what, what has been your most difficult task? And, and how were you able to tackle it? All right. So difficult task. I think I go through that probably every, every week or something like that, every day. Is, is the fact that sometimes persons reach out to you and know they definitely need it and you can't provide this, the resource that they need. So if somebody called me and I look, do my, my do diligence and do some checks, I realize that person actually needs it in an emergency and I can't help, even though sometimes I might break down, you know? So the fact that we are, I would talk to God again and say, look, this is the situation and stuff like that. But he always pull through. Believe me, he always pull through, folks. You know, so that I think that is one of my greatest challenges. Everything else... Um, I always try to find some way to go around it and, 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 and overcome. So it's not really challenging. The people talk bad about me seeing where it's just one of those things, you know. It, it don't show me anymore. The only thing I can do for me right now is actually tell me, look, um, use for change. I did this, it's not continue no more. It's done. That's the only thing I can do for me right now. You know, I'll probably be right one of my children or something, but I'm not that type of person who frown and stuff like that. I just smile off things and continue because there's always always be a next week around things wow i love that. i love your attitude man so much i wish a lot more people were like you you know um just let a lot of things just bounce off their chest because a lot of people they take things so seriously and it ended mm. up hurt it ends up hurting them more than anything else um if you're just joining us i am speaking with mr ricardo burke affectionately known as mr volunteer this young man is doing great things in jamaica he is the founder of the youths for change foundation in jamaica that is feeding children making sure that the children have a nice strong meal before they go to school and if you guys are able to please i want you guys to join in on the cause because it's a great one make sure that you guys Check them out on Instagram at Youths for Change. That's Y U T E S, the number four change. And their email is Youths for Change at gmail.com. Now, Ricardo, I don't imagine there would be any, but I'm going to ask the question anyways. Mm -hmm. What are, are there any misconceptions mm -hmm. about being a humanitarian? Are there any, you know, preconceived notions out there that you have encountered? All right. So, they, 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 yes, there are misconceptions. Um, I'll tell you why. I have a friend who always said to me that, look, it's very good to volunteer and it's very good to help people, but you need to take care of yourself. So, there are persons out there who are doing good work. There are persons out there who are just there for just getting, to get paid. You know, the difference is that um, nothing is wrong if you are getting paid to help people and stuff like that. But I don't think that is human charity that you are doing a job. You know? So that's the only different uh, misconception. So not everybody is doing good mean that they are just doing good. They are actually being paid. You understand? So yeah. we, are, we are here. It's, it's not about pay. We don't really get paid for doing nothing at all. It's just that person just call us and look, Ricardo, I know you. And basically that pay about uh there's there's misconceptions believe me okay all right what do you hope to achieve within say the next six years Repeat. what do you hope to achieve within say the next six years where do you see this this um entire movement in the next um, just the, yeah, just the fact to probably will create more opportunity for underserved communities and people. So um, one of my main things, even before Corona, I wanted to start visiting some communities and like to start um, community groups to give youth opportunity to serve their country because many years serve you know, 
But the other way that you can serve your community and serve your country at large by even combing a whole person here or uh, washing their feet or stuff like that. So one of my goals is to actually create these opportunities for young people to serve their community and country at large. So yeah. Okay. All right. How can listeners support if they're if they're in Jamaica? How how can they become a, a volunteer of the uh, Youth for Change uh, Foundation? All right. So we we basically we have two branches. We have a a branch in Saint Thomas that come into called Dalvi, which is a youth town, and one in Gregor Park, Portmore here in Saint Catherine. Um, there are times when we have like feeding of the homeless where we go and feed the homeless where persons would normally come and volunteer for that day. There are specific programs and, and tasks that persons volunteer and probably will be a day. So for example, our breakfast program which will provide um, free breakfast for students in Gregor Park, probably about 34, 35 of them before COVID, um, with free breakfast to go to school. We also had a breakfast program in St. Thomas as well, just started in Dalvey Primary as well. So you have persons even from overseas would come down and would ask to volunteer for a, probably a man at the breakfast program and stuff like that. So there are specific things and tasks. So for even, we have a thing called um, back to school care day where we bring in hairdressers and barbers to volunteer their time and they would do trim boys for the entire day. They would texturize the girls here and stuff like that and groom them back for um, school and stuff like that. So there are different times and different projects with people volunteer. If we are building a house for a whole lady or a struggling family, there will be trade men who will actually volunteer with us and, and stuff like that. If the computer or homework center wants to be repaired, you have um, computer technicians who would, might come along and say, look, I can volunteer. You know, so it, it, it depends on the type of volunteer experience um, someone wants. Okay. I, and I also want to mention that you, you guys are not only just feeding, you guys are actually washing. I read that you guys wash clothes if you have to sometimes. All right. So the type of person I am, I clean, I clean gully. I clean gullies. Um, when we do um, care for elderly, we we'll, I'll be the person to wash their feet, like scrub it and clip the nails and stuff like that. I'll do that with my beer hands, you know. Um, we wash the ear, we comb the ear. Um, we have students sometimes. We will actually because we, we have a homework center. We have students um, with their homework and stuff like that. And we have this thing where we call um, parent bonding, where the parent come with the child and they actually do the homework together and we assist them. You know, so the parent might not be able to use the computer, but to show them what to do, and so they can actually feel a part of their child's life. We have this thing where sometimes we do um, family trips, where a mother or a father bring the child on the trip, um, free of cost, to spend family money. Because you know, in 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 inner city communities, the, that family time is always the parents the one side and the child the one side. So we try to bring them together even for one day, so they can actually spend some time together. And we have a lot of other projects that we do. We have this program even before COVID, um, which is a food drive that we do on social media. Every two months we do a calling for food items and we go into rural communities across Jamaica, all 14 parishes and distribute food items to disabled and senior citizens. And on that topic also, we're currently trying to gear up now to do one of those outreach, um, I think next, next weekend or there about, and we did one last week as well. So we try our best in our situation and, and persons might ask, how do you get the ideas to do these things? I know what I didn't have growing up, so it is easy to provide it for people. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, what about what about uh, people who are not in Jamaica, overseas? How do they contribute, whether monetarily or otherwise? All right, so we have a local bank account to Jamaica National, and it, it is done through Citibank. But most persons tend to um want to send to persons personally because it take up too much time to do the transfer at a city bank sometimes they're not located the city bank so persons normally they would um send an email or a message to the with a, one of our social media pages and our pr would then provide them with, with our information with our, my information or something um and then they will fi figure out the best way to send the funds and then they will get back um an update of what was done they will get pictures of the projects and so they will feel a part of it we also provide a service where if you are overseas and you want to give back to your community but you are not here, you can tell us what you want, cover the, the, the cost to do it, and we'll do it on your behalf. And when we, say, when we say cover the cost, we don't mean paying anyone. It means that if you want to give back food items to your community, we will purchase the food items and go on your behalf to do the project for you in your um, honor. We also have projects where persons might lose a mom, a father, a sibling, and want to do something in their name. We actually do that as well. 
So they don't want to give back food or they want to do a scholarship or provide that as well. So that that that's basically how we do it now. So wh while you're while you're on the topic, um, what are some acceptable donations? You mentioned um, the money, the food, um, mm -hmm. clothing. Clothing is 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 a money. Money is last option. So we accept food, clothing, appliance, anything possible you know that somebody would want. Okay. You you donate and would accept. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. So we accept any form of donation, anything at all. Okay. Even if you have one tin mackerel, you bring it come, we appreciate it. <laughs> no, you laugh. I'm serious. That's, so I'm dead serious. That's good. Believe me. All right, think about it. If 1,000 people give you $10, how much money is that? Take that. The, yeah. Yeah. No, you understand. Yes. So think about 50 people giving you one tin of tin mackerel. Yeah. Yeah. So now you see, you know? It goes a long way. So it, it, does, it, it doesn't matter how small you think you might be, you can create a big impact on someone else's life. Okay, absolutely. All right. Yeah, I roast bread fruit and tin mackerel before. If I had what? Roast bread fruit and tin mackerel. Have I eat it before? No, I have not. What's that? I've had, <laughs> I've had roast bread fruit and tin mackerel. I've had, I've had roast bread fruit and I've had tin mackerel, but never together. Hey, no, when it tastes that, you'll understand. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Miss J, Miss J, you hear that? We need some tin mackerel and some roast bread fruit. Um, once again, listeners, I'm speaking with Ricardo Burke, aka Mr. Volunteer. The email address for the Youth for Change Foundation is Youth for Change at gmail.com that's y-u-t-e-s number four change at gmail.com and their instagram handle is youths for change um are you on any other social media yes yeah, so we're on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram and it's the same it's the same for the handles youths for change yeah so it's same why you see you have to tell that it's part why now jamaican creole why you <laughs> T E S numeral four change. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> so make sure you guys check them <laughs> out. <laughs> and it, it, that's uh, sorry. That's that's my my partner, uh, Mark Blaze. He's he's laughing his butt off. Over yeah, man. That's okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, make sure that you guys check out Use for Change on <clears throat> Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Send them an email. You guys reach out to them any way you can. You can volunteer if you want to donate. Please do so. Let's all do our part to make this world a better place. And I am going to finish this interview with a quote by Mr. Burke himself. And it says, going forward, we will continue to serve the underserved people of this nation. And that is it for our time with Mr. Burke. Mr. Burke, uh, I know- Hold on, before, before, I know before you go, I want to, um, yeah, no, no, I want to say special thanks to, I think you call him Willie Bones. And you call a uh, uh, roast, uh, we call I, soap banana. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never, so um, there, there are two of my mentors and close friends, you know. And I want to give big shout outs to them and, and, and stuff like that. I want to thank you guys again. Fire P, bless up yourself. I want to thank you guys again for the opportunity. I really, really do appreciate it. And I just want to encourage persons in diaspora, every year in Jamaica, to give back to your community in any way you think you can. It doesn't have to be money. You know, you might have an extra shirt that somebody can use, you know? And you, just, you, don't, you don't necessarily have to give use for change. Find somebody and, and, and actually reach out, see how best you can help. You know, I'm not that type of selfish person who try to want everything for use for change, and that's it. No. You know, just... And one of my main mission, I should say that too, is that I want giving back to becomes a way of life and not a choice. You know, so many times we, we try to give in seasons, you know, and when God, when you want God bless you, you, wait, you, you want to bless you in the moment. So it's the same energy i want persons to give to others you know giving back becomes a way of life you do it every day when you open a door for somebody you open a car door or you tell somebody look thank you very much at the um, supermarket where the person pack your bag and you give them a tip or you give them an encouragement or something like that you know so yeah wow, wow. ricardo i'm very impressed i'm very impressed with your actions man yes and no, thank um, you for the opportunity man. And we definitely pray that you will continue to do the great work. And we're definitely going to do our part 
to help in any way that we can and we encourage others to do so as well once again thank you so much for coming on to the gold digger show god bless you and your team everybody who is working with you everybody who has already contributed thank you guys so much for doing your part and god bless you and everyone who is working with you thank welcome you. to bluefm.com slated as north america's best streaming source for caribbean entertainment news the team utilizes the advent of enhanced technology to explore the digital arena of broadcasting which competitors viewed us as an immediate citadel in the industry we create a mix of up-to-the-minute contents and top music, top music for the month on a compelling site of groundbreaking information. groundbreaking information we are consistently seeking content writers djs and producers to partake in our ongoing projects to be the best are you looking to start your online business do not hesitate send your inquiry to gluefmads at gmail.com for more information